And that brings me neatly onto the topic that I want to open this show with. Because this has blown my mind. I'm not going to lie. Because at the time when it happened, I was duped by the tears. I was duped by the snot. I was duped by just the fucking pure freak nature of the situation that happened in real time. I was legitimately drawn by it. Like, I can't even lie and pretend that I wasn't. It definitely, definitely, definitely did get me. And what I'm talking about is Brick Lady. Do you guys remember Brick Lady? Do you guys remember this young lady who unfortunately, you know, spoke of some weird instance where she was out one day at a night out and these guys came up to her to try and get her number and she said no. And the guy, because he couldn't handle rejection, he allegedly hit her over the head with a brick. And if I'm not mistaken, when she got hit over the head with a brick, she ended up looking like this. Let's get the picture actually up on here. She ended up looking like the elephant man. That's how hard somebody hit her with the he side of the head of a brick. She was crying on a video talking about how nobody was helping her. Everybody just abandoned her. And it was a really kind of sad state of affairs to kind of see on the internet because it was like, shit, bro. Are there guys out there that are like so, you know, have such fragile egos who have, you know, such insecurities who are unable to, you know, um, accept fucking rejection that they would like immediately go to violence when somebody says no it didn't make any sense it was super disturbing it was quite sad to see and obviously the conversation around it kind of devolved into like men against women and it really turned nasty very quickly but she did put up a gofundme that did really well at the time i remember that the gofundme like even here i've seen a screenshot the gofundme exceeded her goal of twenty five thousand dollars. she got at the time this screenshot was taken forty two thousand three hundred and twenty two dollars crazy crazy amount of flipping donations given to her obviously because of that crazy uh, uh, instance that allegedly happened well look at the headline now woman known as brick lady is charged in houston after being accused of making the whole thing up she's been charged now for making up the whole entire thing that split the internet this topic that was a raging topic for like a couple of weeks over the internet about men inability to handle rejection and how dangerous it is for young ladies to be out in town enjoying themselves and having a good time and how there's no gentleman around and how black men especially didn't jump in to help her this whole affair that split the internet split past the social media it's now being alleged that she made the whole thing up i'm shocked and we're going to quickly watch a video that kind of recaps it courtesy of the platform comedy hype this is the time when it came out so this is from like four months ago when it happened comedy hype did a pretty good comprehensive roundup of what happened so i'm going to play a bit of it for you now to kind of jog your memory on what happened and then we're going to obviously talk about the article but this is absolutely crazy for comedy hype news i'm symphony thompson a viral video has been making its rounds all over social media where a woman is sharing her experience after encountering a man who hit her in the face with a brick for not giving out her phone number. The original video from Ro Bache was shared online by The Shade Room, Neighborhood Talk, and various others online tabloids. By the, the way, the caption from The Shade um, Room reads, woman gets hospitalized after being hit on, in bro. the face with a brick Read, by a man work, work, after she refuses pause. to give her number. The incident occurred in Houston, Texas, and she says she was surrounded by men who did absolutely nothing. She says the man got in the car and left the scene. By the way, those of you in the stream chat, were you guys, did you guys know at the time that she was lying? Because I, I believe the story. I can't lie. I believe the story. I thought it was true. I thought it happened. What did you guys think? Did you at the time believe that it was a lie? Did you think she made it up? What did you guys think at the time it happened? Did you guys believe it or not? Of course she was lying. Everyone says, okay, so everybody believed it was a lie at the time. Seven Dirty said, I believed her. Yeah, <laughs> of course she was lying. Someone had immediately said that she, he knew, they knew her and it was a lie. Austin Casey, I don't believe anything on the internet. Great guy, never met him. Do you remember, do you remember, um, yeah, exactly. You see, that's the thing. Red, red chem, red chem. That's exactly where I am. Somebody got hit with a brick with no abrasions or blood. That's, I remember when somebody said that, I was like, you know what? That is kind of weird. She has no laceration, no gash. Like, it seems a bit strange that you get hit with a brick and it'll just like, inf you know, swell up like that. After assaulting her. But I do remember, do you guys remember people on the internet, on social media saying that it looked, sim it looked more similar to like um, a bad reaction? Like she got an allergic reaction or something. Do you remember that? That, that narrative. I remember some guys, but again, 
If you're a guy and you didn't believe her on social media, you were getting shouted at so hard. So guys were afraid to say what they thought. But I remember there was a dude online that was saying that how that looks similar to some sort of like bad reaction to something. So maybe there were people out there that didn't believe it, but I honestly got duped. I'm not going to lie. I definitely got duped. And is afraid he will never get caught. Now, the first of several videos took place moments after the incident where Roe called out all of the black men that saw the attack and didn't do anything about it. Roe was shocked at the amount of bystanders that didn't intervene or retaliate in her defense. Yo, this man just hit me in my face with a brick and all these black men just watch and they don't give a brick I also didn't really get that point as well. I was unaware. I, I, I'm, I'm somebody that would say, if that was me and I saw that happening in front of me, I would definitely jump in. There's no way I'm going to let somebody get abused in front of me. That's not happening. It doesn't matter if I get, if I get, my house gets kicked as well. I'm definitely getting, getting involved. 100% I would have. But I always thought it was weird that she expected people to jump in. That was like, that, don't get me wrong. I would have done it. But her expecting people to jump in and trying to shame them for not jumping in was very odd. Like, you're not entitled to anybody's protection, you know? They don't know you. Like, why would they do... Do you know what I mean? Like, it was a strange narrative to kind of run down. Yes, you can be disappointed, but to kind of, like, get them on face, you know, do a selfie video recording them, trying to shame them because they didn't jump into your beef is odd because that could have been a domestic violence dispute. The worst thing you can do as a man is jump in during a domestic violence dispute, get your ass kicked, and then see the girl walk off with the guy that you're trying to protect her from. Because that's what happens a lot. If people are in, you know, toxic, abusive relationships, you know, they don't necessarily leave when you think they should leave. It takes some time. And usually jumping in actually maybe might things might, might make things worse and will definitely make you question why you even jump in the first place because they end up walking down the street together, holding hands. Do you know what I mean? I'm sure most of you have seen that video. I'm sure you all have seen that video. I think it's in somewhere like in Eastern Europe. Maybe it's Russia. Who knows where it is, right? Where um, there's a couple. They walk into an elevator and then they just start fighting. And, the, and they're literally punching each other. And there's literally blood being splattered all over the fucking elevator. Like crazy. Then they walk out on their floor. And then they come back 20 minutes later. And they start cleaning the whole thing. Both of them. Like cleaning it like perfectly fine cleaning the fucking lift of all the blood and then they leave they leave like what what the fuck is that <laughs> you know what i mean imagine jumping in the middle of that and then getting stabbed and then getting shot it's fucking insane so i understand that guys that don't do it i would do it if it was me i'm brave enough and i have enough conviction and i have enough principles and i have enough morals and i you know stand for something where i would do it even if i even if my ass does get kicked it doesn't matter even if i end up in hospital i'll definitely stand up for somebody and be like Fyodor. it was me I bricked her. Sorry. <laughs> bricked up on a fucking Thursday. Let's continue. This yes, yes. Big up Rodeo Brito. Big up Rodeo. Rock, and it hit me in my fucking face because I would have given him my number. And it. all y'all just fucking watch. Oh, you see that shit? Yo, big up Austin Casey. Yes, yes. Yo, big up has daytime stream to listen to on a work day. This day is going to be great. You know how we do. You know how we rocking. You see that shit? What do y'all want y'all to do? I want y'all to be a man. I want y'all to be a man and do something. Y'all gonna let a man hit me in my face. Man, all y'all niggas. The next video how, show. How can you be like post bricking and you're still annoying? How can you be post bricking and you're obnoxious and annoying? And you just got bricked. <laughs> you'd think it would like settle you down a bit, right? You'd be a bit chill. You'd be like a bit somber, contemplating like what led to the situation. But nah, she's still barking. And y'all niggas, y'all didn't help me. Y'all niggas, you bum ass niggas. Y'all didn't help me. Look at my face, you bum ass niggas. You should have helped me. Oh, man, a shit. <laughs> it's like, whoa, yo, relax, man. You just got bricked. Like, chill. Do you want an aspirin or something? Like, do you want a paracetamol? Like, do you want a paint? Like, why are you, like, hey, like, whoa. Those <laughs> row in the hospital with her injuries. Habibi, Habibi, chill, chill. <laughs> clearly visible. She would go into detail about how disappointed she was. What have I ever done to anybody in my life to deserve this? I never did anything in my life to hurt anybody. Literally, a man asked me for my number. I said no, and he he picked up a brick in front of so many men and was like 
What are you gonna do? And I told all these men like You know what, you know what, you know what? I know this is Monday morning quarterback things. I know, and I did confess that she did dupe me. I know this is Monday morning callback things, and I do confess she duped me. But doesn't she look like she's lying there? <laughs> doesn't she look like she's lying? Doesn't she look like she's lying right there on the in the hospital? She looks like she's fucking lying. Oh man! Ah! I'm so dumb. I'm so dumb. How could I not see it? You can see her like looking for the story. Um, um, um. He like. Bro, she's lying right there. She's lying in the hospital. Fuck, man. I can't believe she fucking got me. Yo, why this man got a brick on my face? He's holding a brick. And all these niggas is watching. And nobody does nothing. And he hits me in my face. And then they all just watch. And they let that nigga get in the court. How is this okay? This is what y'all doing to me. Hey, yo, Assad, I'm not going to lie. I definitely, definitely 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 was tempted to i didn't in the end but i definitely was close i definitely was close to contributing to the fucking to the gofundme i swear to god i was close i think that's why i'm reacting the way i am i was definitely close you are bang on there Assad. you are bang on i was so close it got me man i remember just browsing on social media I remember just browsing and I saw her face like she was crying, snot everywhere, looking like elephant man. I was like, oh my God, bro, what the fuck happened to this girl? And you're reading the story like, oh shit, that's so horrible, that's so tragic. It immediately tugged at my heartstrings and I was about to like, you know what I mean? I was about to do the old, the old phone, you know what I mean? You would have saw me, you would have saw me the, in the list of donators on the side there. You would have saw me, listen, donators, um, donated, uh, you know, $50 from Agostino Zinga. You know what I mean? <laughs> get, get well soon, babe. This is horrible. <laughs> exo, exo, get well soon, babe. This is so horrible. I feel bad for you. Yo. Yo. She, exactly. She nearly got some of my cat money. She nearly got some of my cat shekels. Some of my cat shekels nearly went to her fucking lies. She nearly got my cat shekels. How dare you? How dare you? In the final video updating everyone, Ro would express gratitude for the support she's received thus far, but also took the time to call on her followers to put the face of the man who hit her. <laughs> This girl was full of shit from the beginning, innit? I can't believe I didn't see it. Maybe it's the fucking glasses. Look at this girl. Look at this girl, man. Imagine making content around getting abused like this. Like, surely you'd be like, want to be hidden somewhere. Like, look at this girl's face. She also took the time to call on her followers <laughs> to put the face of the man who hit her out there. She would ask to send her and make... Come on, man. I can't believe I didn't see this. Oh my God, I'm so fucking gullible. I swear I'm so gullible. I swear I am. Fuck. You know what it, you know what it is? You know what it is? I'm going to be confessed. You know what it is? It's the bogey. When somebody cries and they start as an adult, because you do that when you're a kid. But if you're an adult and you're crying and there's bogey coming out of your nose, you must be really sad. Like something really bad happened. Like, you're like, uh, 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 like how can I not be feeling sad for you? How can I not have empathy when you're like, uh, 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 uh. that's what got me. The, uh, 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 uh. Him the focal point of this discussion instead of her. After thanking those who were on her side, Ro would end the video by calling her criticizers unsympathetic, lacking compassion, and evil. Her caption read, my anxiety is on 10. I'll be on Do Not Disturb for a while. You don't even know. I really, really do appreciate the support. You know what I mean? I see so many women. Coming no, 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 no. See, I, I, I don't think, though. No. I disagree. Rodeo, I disagree. She perfected the cry. I disagree. You know, I disagree. Most people have a cry they perfect, but it's like, it's not the bogey one. It's like a, you know, it's like a, if, if you have to rate cries from like one to 10, one being the like, you know, the lowest, maybe you kick your toe in the bottom of a couch and 10 being like something really tragic happening, like a member of your family passing. Rarely do you, you don't really have the member of a family passing tears on deck. 
You can't just press a button and just go. <laughs> Most people can't do that unless you're a fucking actor. Do you know what I mean? Who can do that? Who can who can bogey cry on fucking command? But clearly she can. Clearly she fucking can. She bogey cried on fucking. Yeah, so maybe you're right. Maybe you're fucking right. Maybe she's one of those freaks that is able to bogey cry on command. Because I think we all have it in our ability. All of us here have the ability to probably cry at a level five on command. If we have to. If we have to get out a lie. Do you know what I mean? If we get caught fucking stealing some chocolate in the store. You know what I mean? We don't want to get... We can all cry. But can all of us cry at level 10? Can all of us go... <laughs> like, I can't do that shit. How do you do that? How do you make bogey come out of your nose on command? That's insane, bro. That's insane. That's mental health levels of insane. I swear it. I fucking swear it. Appreciate it. I'm in gratitude. <laughs> Austin Casey. I can learn for four. Okay, you see? This is why I have the best chat. This is why I have the best chat. I can learn for 42K. That's it. That's fucking it. You put up a you you put up 42k, I can learn to cry. <laughs> yeah, I'm kinda That's me. <laughs> Yo! Yo! And I don't know, I don't know how um I don't know how GoFundMe works. But I, I, I bet GoFundMe, you can probably withdraw the funds all at once, right? I don't know how GoFundMe works, but I'm assuming you can just withdraw the funds all at once. So you get that 42K, boop, straight in your Wells Fargo. Boop, straight in your Bank of America. Boop, straight in your Monzo. Boop, straight in your Lloyds. Boop. So if that's the temptation, let's cry together. One, two, three. Ah! One, two, three. Ah! <laughs> Yo, <laughs> I don't appreciate it. There's a lot oh. of bullying. There's a lot of fucking bullshit, and y'all just kill me because I didn't have a choice. You know what I mean? There was nothing I could have done to anticipate something like that to happen. There's like forty-two <laughs> k. I'll be whatever you want me to be. <laughs> exactly. You know that I could have done. If y'all want to talk about this conversation, go ahead. Because I'm the one that brought it online, but. Censor him. Put his face out there. Put his face out there. Y'all talk about him because he's the one who made a choice. People know him because security told me that, you know, he used to work somewhere at some restaurant. So uh, we will find him. And when I do, I need y'all to censor him because he also jumped in a car with a bunch of black women. You know what I mean? He was trying to jump in a car with a dude, but we wouldn't let the car leave. So he jumped out of that car and ran into another car. And I couldn't get the license plate number. Y'all know who he is. Put him out there, center his face, and then talk about it because he's the one who got to make a choice. I didn't get to fucking make a choice. He did. So center his fucking goddamn face because this is so fucking bullshit. Like, y'all are so unempathetic. Y'all y'all lack compassion. I don't know how y'all can justify something like that. I don't give a fuck. Thank you for the people who have been very supportive. But center his face. Talk about him. He's the one who made a goddamn choice. Put his face up in the front. Thank you. Since the video was released, online users have been split on this issue, with some even discrediting Roe by bringing up her past videos to justify her being hit. There have been a few more videos circulating that show Roe lightly slapping some white men across the face with the caption, Indeed, we're all God's children, but we're his favorite. This is activism and consensual, and I do not promote actual violence. Users would still take the time to respond with... Uh, get fucked, Robert Minnis. Get fucked. Get fucked. She tricked me once. She's not tricking me again. She nearly got me. She nearly fucking got me. She's not tricking me again. She's not getting me again. <laughs> one user saying, I initially said no one deserves to be assaulted, but upon discovering new information, I take that bit back. Even if her... <laughs> this sounds like a fucking Bill Burr joke, isn't it? This sounds like a Bill Burr joke, doesn't it? If you don't read the screen, this sounds like a Bill Burr joke. Listen, listen again. <laughs> Still take the time to respond with one user saying, I initially said no one deserves to be assaulted, but upon discovering new information, I take that bit back, even if her story is true. 
She is insufferable, man-hating, excuse of a human being, and so I'm making an exception in this case. Jesus this Christ. This is what we have seen about her. Now imagine the ones we haven't seen. Now, I don't, I don't agree with this take. I remember that was a take that people had online. The take was, oh, she hit him first. I don't think there's any situation where you can justifiably hit a woman with a brick unless she hit you with a brick. That's the only way you can justify hitting a girl with a brick. And even then, like, that's some psycho shit. You know what I mean? Because you could easily subdue a woman without having any... If you can't subdue a woman without using a brick, you probably need to hit the gym. That's probably a you, a you problem. Do you understand? But to suggest that just because she's annoying and because she hates men and because she's a feminist that she deserves to get bricked is wild. That is wild. Like, some of the takes I saw online were like, fuck, man, you guys have a real, especially in America, I feel like you guys have a real civil war with the blacks over there between the men and women. Like, men and women within the black community in the United States don't really like each other. <laughs> I don't think they like each other at all. The women run the guys' pockets. The men, you know, treat the women like they're all fucking sluts. It's fucking weird. When they were saying that online, I was like, raw, like, like, just, so what? Because she's annoying. Because she's insufferable. Because she's obnoxious. Because she's a bit up her own ass, she deserves to get bricked. You're going to brick somebody for being annoying. <laughs> Are you going to shoot somebody in the, in the fucking face? <laughs> because, they, because they annoyed you. You're just going to shoot someone. <laughs> it's so wild out there in America. Honestly, you guys are fucking nuts. So yeah, I stand on that anyway. Unless a girl bricks you, there's no reason why you should brick a girl. Like, honestly, come on, what are we doing here? Another video shows the woman twerking, insinuating that this was an excuse for what happened. Look at how Brit Girl acts around white people. <laughs> On the other side of the argument, a social media user representing... Imagine, so imagine thinking she deserves to get bricked because she twerked. <laughs> she twerked on the colonizer. That means she deserves to get bricked. Come on, man. We need to come on. Come on. Come on. Some women's thoughts would say, this is why I'll always give my number out in public, regardless if I have a man or not, because you never know how a man will react when he gets rejected. This is sad and she didn't deserve this at all. It's scary out here. Women should not have to do this to protect ourselves. Now, I agree with the sentiment here. It is quite sad that we do live in a world where women legitimately have to fear for their lives when they step outside. I remember this one time when I went to a house party. I forgot what, it was like a long time ago, right? Um, I went to a house party and I usually, whenever I go to house parties, I don't do it anymore now because I feel like it's a little bit self-absorbed. But when I'd go to house parties, I'd always want to be the center of attention and I'd always bring up these fucking topics to people to talk about and get the whole room debating and, you know, make it a bit of a vibe. But I stopped doing it now because it just, you know, it's a bit cringe. So which one time I did it and I remember asking girls in the room or something like, oh, um, put your hand up if you've been assaulted or something, if you've been sexually assaulted in one way. And literally every girl in the, in the room put their hand up. And they, they all went around and basically started talking about what happened. And it was all horrible shit. Like getting touched up in the club. Somebody did this. Somebody jacked off in front of me. Like horrible shit, right? Horrible shit. And then one thing I remember learning when I was in that house party that I never thought of as a guy was that some girl was like, oh, and one of the worst things she said, one of the worst things about being a girl is that I can't even like enjoy things like Uber Eats and stuff. I was like, why? What do you mean? She's like, oh, like, obviously, I don't, I don't order that stuff on my own because I live alone, innit? Like, I live alone and I don't live in a good place, you know, part of town. So if I order stuff, usually, guys that deliver stuff sometimes can be a bit weird when they deliver stuff. Because obviously, with the, if she's ordering a pizza and it's like one pizza and a bit of garlic bread, maybe they can tell that, oh, shit, you're alone. And that they can maybe get some ideas and shit. I was like, what? It's like, yeah, it's happened a couple of times. So there's girls out there that legitimately don't order shit online, delivery, because they're afraid some guy might try and assault them in their home. Or what I've heard of some girls do is that they'll purposely order a, order food online and make it look like it's for two people. So if they order a pizza, they'll order two, like a meal for two or something to make it look like another person's indoors or just like fake talk to somebody. So somebody who doesn't get the wrong idea. Can you imagine living like that? Like that's fucked up. 
And that's something that we don't see as a guy because, you know, we're dudes, innit? Like, you just order what you order. Like, I open the door sometimes fully stark and just popping my head out. Yeah, you're right, mate. Yeah, thank you. You know what I mean? It doesn't matter. <laughs> Try and beat me up when I'm naked. I dare you. Try and beat me up when I'm naked. I'll put my fucking nuts in your face. That's it. Job done. So, obviously, as a guy, we don't have to have that thing in our back of our head. And I think the same thing happens with dudes with numbers because as much as we, you like, you know, men want to be rah, 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 and I'm the, sim I'm the same, we all know some freaks. We all know some weirdos, guys out there that don't respond well to rejection. Like, we, we've all had friends like that we've grown up with around our area, maybe in school, where they handle rejection really weirdly. Like, they get super, you know, they want to get physical. They get really rude and aggressive. They start swearing. Like, it's like, yo, she just said no to the dance. She just said no to the number. Like, it's not that big of a deal, brother. Like, you're, you're not... You're not and I'm, and I'm one of the people that thinks you're not even obligated to, you're not even, you're not even entitled to a response. If you decide to go and holler somebody at somebody on the street, like, and, you know, because you like what they look like, whatever, and you're imagining them naked and shit, you don't, you don't fucking owe the response. You know what I mean? If she wants to give you one, then fair enough. But if she decides to scream, run away, tell you to fuck off, whatever it may be, you have to just eat that. It is what it is. It's the price of the game. That's what happens when you roll the dice and you're trying to hook up with somebody is that sometimes she may say, oh, hi. And then sometimes you might say, ah, that's, per it's, it is what it is. You can't respond from the, to a scream with fucking punches or bricks and stuff. That's not on at all. That's not cool. But the sad thing is to end all that fucking simping. The sad thing is this girl fucking lied. That's the sad thing. She used all that trauma. She used all that real pain. She used all that fear that some women actually have. And she exploited it for her own personal gain. This woman, in my opinion, again, <clears throat> this is a stretch I'm going to say. I think she's worse than the guy that could allegedly brick her. Because she's taken the pain of people that are actually going through real shit for her own personal gratification. That guy that can allegedly brick you, that's like a one in a million opportunity. That's like a one in a million situation, opportunity, circumstance that could happen, whatever. But a woman being premeditated and thinking through a scam like this and playing it all out and, you know, purposely eating fucking shellfish so her face fucking inflames, all this sort of nonsense, that's fucking evil. That is pure evil that you would exploit and take advantage of people's real pain for your own personal gain. That's fucking not on it as well. But again, what do I know? Now, Comedy Hype's own Yamanika Saunders would respond to the story via The Shade Room's Instagram post saying, Black women... We are on our own. They will not help or protect you. <laughs> y'all have to give up the fantasy of black men protecting y'all. They hate us too. What? We have to protect ourselves. Yo, what? What? What the fuck, man? Why are we getting why why are we getting attacked? What did we do? She fucking lied. Yo. Who am I? Am I fucking Batman? Am I fucking Batman? Again, I've got some courage, right? I don't I don't mind I don't mind getting into a scrap. I don't mind if I win or lose. I'm not that bothered. It's only a fight. Scrapes and cuts are fucking temporary. Pride is fucking eternal. I don't mind getting my ass kicked. Uh, whatever. It is what it is. But should most guys be putting on a fucking cape? Why would you do that for someone that you don't fucking know? Like, what the, what's this all about? Hey! And she fucking lied as well. Joining me, I have her very own borderline analyst. Anyway, anyway, Miller. anyway. But anyway. first, let's hear from a witness from the actual yeah, incident. Go, 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 go. I was one of the guys who was there. Okay, so this is the part. This is the part that confuses me. We're going to read the article in a minute, right? Where it says that she lied right here. But this is the part that confuses me. Please keep this guy's testimony in mind when we read the article. This is the part that confuses me. Witness from the actual incident. I was one of the guys who was there that did not help her when she was getting hit with the brick, right? I feel like people need to know the whole story before they start commenting and saying things they don't understand or they don't know. You guys don't even remember who you guys are trying to defend, who you guys are trying to speak up for. This is the same woman that was going around smacking white people in the streets. She's not innocent. She was actually taunting the guy to hit her. Why would I go defend somebody that's actually looking for trouble? This woman, she is literally a troublemaker. Everybody that knows her in our community knows she's a troublemaker. I'm not going to risk my life over somebody that's actually out there looking for trouble. If you go on social media, online, you're going to see some of her antic videos taunting people, 
looking for a reaction. Well, she got what she been looking for, and you guys are giving her the attention that she was actually seeking for. I don't regret not standing up for her. If you look at some of the videos, I wasn't there. I don't regret nothing whatsoever. I don't regret <laughs> standing up for her. I'm not saying she deserves it. I'm not saying that any men have a right to hit a woman, especially with a brick. Nobody deserves that. No one deserves it, yet I'll stand <clears throat> I'll stand to a side and see it happening. No one deserves it, but I'll just let it happen in front of me. What? <laughs> huh? Eh? By the end of the day, there's more to the story. She's not as innocent as she trying to portray herself to be. She wants attention. She's an attention seeker woman. She tried to go viral, and you guys have given her what she wanted. Yes, she did get hit by a brick. Yes, I saw it. Yes, I was standing by doing nothing. <laughs> and if that shit happen again in the same circumstances i will watch because she's not as innocent as she portrays herself to be she was taunting the guy she was calling him all type of names she was taunting, degrading taunting. him to a point where he resulted in not just that gender baiting race baiting co-opting black women's issues into this she should settle down with that nice young jesse smell it fella yeah honestly yeah that's it good point gender baiting race baiting co-opting yeah it's just Honestly, this is way that is way more evil than somebody's. Again, it's all bad, but somebody's moment of fucking flash moment of aggression and fucking psychosis is that's that's that pales in comparison to somebody sitting down and planning out this whole fucking thing. Condone that type of behavior, but once again, she's not as innocent as she portrays herself to be. I literally, like, I remember a while back, she's posting videos going around in public, literally smacking old white people in the face. For what? <laughs> Don't smack my white boy in the face. Don't smack my white baby in the face. You know, what's this? Don't think my white baby. Don't think him. She's don't think my white baby. Don't smack him. Leave my white baby. My white niggas. Don't doubt my white niggas. <laughs> what? Okay. Whatever, dude. Anyways, so let's read the article, right? Because this guy said he was there, saw what happened, and didn't intervene. Now, this article is fucking crazy. <clears throat> let's go. Courtesy of um, click2houston.com. A woman who went viral. Uh, yeah, a woman who went viral after making claims a man assaulted her with a brick outside a Houston club is now accused of raising tens of thousands of dollars in GoFundMe scam. So they're calling it a scam. In full HD here, they're calling it a S C A M, <clears throat> right? Scam, scam, scam. <clears throat> Please forgive me. Um, Rodda Osman, 33, has been charged with a felony theft by deception. According to the charging documents, Osman raised at least $40,000 through a fraudulent GoFundMe page she started in September that aimed, that claimed that she was a victim of a similar attack more than three years ago. On September the 3rd, Houston police officers responded to an aggravated assault incident. They met Osman and her friend. During the investigations, officers reported that Osman was intoxicated, hostile, and irate. Understandable, right? Given the circumstances, you're out anywhere on a night out. That happens. In, if it, it actually happened, it can be understandable why she was intoxicated. It can be why she was hostile and why she was irate. Perfectly fine so far. In the original police report made at the scene, Osman claimed that she was walking on Schumacher Lane when an unknown man threw a brick at her and she would not give her a phone number, the court documents say. I'm just picturing a scenario of some guy that like, throwing a brick at a girl after she says no to the number. And it seems so funny. It seems like a sketch out of like the in-betweeners or something. Or like, I don't know. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Like some guy just hurling a brick at a girl when she says no. It's fucking insane, bro. Insane. If you actually did that in real life, like, you deserve to be in prison. Like, because that's, that's like, that's kind of manslaughter, isn't it? If you hear somebody with a brick, that's not just battery. That has to be manslaughter, right? Because a brick traveling, like, a distance from a man throwing it, like, that could really, that could fuck you up. Like, you could actually die if it hits you in a certain spot. But hey... She also told officers that um, she ordered an Uber and believed the brick thrown suspect was the Uber driver. <laughs> driver. So some guy hits you with a brick and then you jump in an Uber to go home and then you realize the driver is actually the guy that hit you with the brick. Crazy. Osman said that she got into the car with him where they were, where, when he then tried to kidnap her. 
According to the documents, Osman stated the suspect was involved in human trafficking and had a large group of women in a car. So this is where it starts to fall apart for me. This is where it starts to fall apart. So this bricking happens. You call an Uber to go home. The Uber pulls up. You jump into the Uber, but then only when you jump into the Uber, you realize the driver is the guy that bricked you. Then at, when you're in a car, he doesn't let you out. And now he's trying to like kidnap you, I guess, right? Sex trap, whatever the term is, because I guess you're, he's moving you from one location to another. So technically it's kidnapping, especially if you say you want to leave. And then there's, there's in this car, what car is it? Is it a limo? There's like a group of women there that also look like they're under duress. There's like women like in handcuffs and you're there on your own. Like, that's where it starts to fall apart. Like, what? You got bricked by like some, by, you got bricked by a guy that happens to drive Ubers, who happened to be the driver that you picked, that you called for for an Uber, happened to be right there. And then he also happened to be a sex trafficking kingpin. Okay, continuing. On September the 15th, detectives tried to reach Osman, but the number she provided was her friend's number. Again, another red flag. Um, who was also at the scene when the incident was reported. The friend said that she was not from Houston and went out of several places to drink with Osman, documents show. She and Osman reportedly called her male friend to come and pick them up. So now we're seeing some different stories here because now the friend that was there is providing different details, not corroborating the victim's account, the alleged victim. It continues. The woman told investigators that she got into the right front passenger seat. Osman in the back seat with another man. So now we're getting the scenario that the car was like, what, like a Prius, like a regular, you know, a regular four door, five door fucking car. Right. So the driver's in where he's where he's meant to be sitting. The passenger seat's free. And then there's obviously space at the back for three or two people. So where was this group of women that also be sexual? like, you know, they're starting to fall apart already because you couldn't fit all those people in the car. As they were driving, she reportedly heard Osman yell, ouch. Why you hit me? If you got bricked in the back of an Uber, would you say ouch? Or would you like let out? Especially if you're a girl that can cry with bug in your nose. Wouldn't you scream? Would, like, wouldn't it be something? Would you be saying ouch? Ouch? Was that a brick? Babe, stop it. <laughs> what are you doing? <laughs> Why are you bricking me? <laughs> the only brick I want is that inside of me. It's like, like anyway, continuing. The friend, start, the friend stated off the record. Again, look at the friend. The friend is offering different descriptions of what happened. The friend stated off the record that she did not believe that Osman was hit with a brick, according to the charging documents. The friend told detectives that the suspect who allegedly assaulted Osman got out of their vehicle and got into another vehicle and drove off. She said Osman went live on Instagram and that she tried to convince Osman to call the police. So she didn't want to call the police. The guy allegedly left before the police got there. Whatever. It continues. The friend said she did not know the, the two men she got into the car with and would not be able to positively identify suspects according to the documents. So I'm guessing two men she means one the Uber driver and one the guy that got into the back with her friend. Also, I guess there's something to be said for if you're a girl and you both, because they went out on a girl's night. If you're going out on a girl's night and it's a time to go home, would you be comfortable getting in the passenger seat and leaving your friend to be at the back with some random dude? Or would that random dude be somebody she might have talked to in the, in the club? Maybe that was a guy that she was speaking to in the club. They hit it off. They might have made out. And then you're going back. You know what I mean? They're all going back to their place. Or maybe she's going back to his place. But you're comfortable leaving them in the back because you saw them in the club and you talk, spoke to them as well. But would you leave some random stranger to sit in the back passenger seat with your friend? You wouldn't, would you? So most likely, you know. Anyway, let's continue. A detective finally made contact with Osman in September 19th. During the phone interview, Osman told the detectives that her friend came to town and picked all the clubs they went to. So now, again, there's, this, there's already finger pointing. The other friend kind of threw under the bus. Now she's doing the same thing. You know, like, my friend took me there and whatever. Cool. They reportedly started at an O2 lounge and then went to Liquid Lounge. Osman said that they left the club. She called an Uber. To be fair, the first mistake they went, they did, was going to a club. Any clubs called lounge, they always end in trouble. Anytime you go to an establishment that has the word lounge in it, something bad's going to happen. <laughs> Always. Never go to a place that says lounge because it's not a lounge because lounges are meant to be comfortable. You're meant to be feeling safe, you know, but these lounges are usually the opposite of comfortability and safety. But again, what do I know? 
According to the charging documents, when the dark colour sedan pulled up, Osman thought it was the Uber that she called and got inside. So after she got bricked, I guess maybe she was maybe concussed and dizzy. She didn't double check to see what the if that was an Uber. She just jumped in, and maybe that's what she can. That's how she's maybe explaining how she got into the car with the guy that allegedly bricked, bricked her because she wasn't, you know, she, she wasn't in the right state of mind. Maybe Osman told the detective that when the suspect hit her in the face with a the, no, that's when the suspect hit her in the face with a brick when she got into the car. Imagine wanting to hit somebody in the face with a brick in a car, not outside of a car. She also stated that she did her own investigation and found out that it was a man called Olin Douglas, sorry, Olin Douglas, who assaulted her. When Osman was asked um, where her friend was at the time, she reportedly became upset and said that her friend was far away from her while talking to another guy. <laughs> See? Look at this. No fucking, no honor amongst fucking women. Look at this. Look at them both throwing each other under the bus. Osman then changed her story to say that she was assaulted at the Liquid Lounge Club. After more questioning from the Houston police detectives, Osman became upset, asked to speak to a detective op supervisor, and then hung up. The detective said that she still provided her name to the sergeant. So she changed her story, said it was in the car, then it was in the liquid lounge, and then she said after that, and then she hung up the foot, like, again, that's somewhat understandable if the assault happened. It's traumatic, you don't want to go through it again, hung up the phone, get fucked. Cool. Let's continue surveillance video tells another story this is where it falls apart and this is where it really starts to hurt my feelings because i believed her original story and i feel like such a fucking idiot i feel like such an idiot that i got duped by her bogey and her tears when really it looks like she probably made up the entire thing on september 20th Houston police detectives canvassed the area where the assault was reported and spotted surveillance cameras in the 5600 block of schumacher the company that owns the cameras provided detectives with the footage from them charging document show. So there's CCTV footage of what happened. It continues. In the footage, the man that Osmond claimed hit her, Olin Douglas, was also identified. So this man does exist. Detectives said Douglas, Osmond, and her friend were seen talking amongst each other and walking towards TikTok Garden. Yo, what, what place is this in the US? where all the clubs are called lounges. TikTok Garden Lounge. Liquid Lounge. O2 Lounge. Why is everything called a lounge? Like, what the fuck is this lounge thing? Is this like a... Is this like a... Is this like a... Tr uh, a sly way of calling somebody a strip club? Like, what, what's the... What's this lounge obsession? So weird. Anyway. Um, they all went to... They all reportedly went inside the club together. So the guy that allegedly bricked her, her friend, and the victim all went to the club together. Perfectly fine. No bricks involved. About 20 minutes later, the video showed the trio walking outside the club, then walking towards a white Maserati. So they get in a little bit. They feel the vibe. This lounge isn't lounging. They step outside. The guy says, yo, come to my whip. His Maserati is outside. You know you know how girls are. They don't know anything about cars. They probably feel that's like Aston Martin. Do you know what I mean? In their head, that's probably a Bentley. Do you know what I mean? He's like, yeah, pulls up. He's got his little Maserati out there. They're like, oh my God, it's so fast. Ah whatever cool yeah cool um the maserati is parked directly on the side of the business douglas reportedly is seen leaning on the right passenger door while osman walked towards him now most guys know what i'll go on with that in it when you're leaning up against the car it's your whip you know the little bad bee that you've been speaking to in the club she walks up towards you and that you know what i mean you get your arm around that thing and that you know what i mean you're there you know what i mean just like giving it your Giving it your like R and B lips, like, yeah, you know what it is, you know what it is, right? So they're in, they're in happy go go time, right? They want to have some adult fun. They're like, yeah, you know what, I'll go on. you know how it is, isn't it? Yeah, you know. So it's not a truck walk, it's a Maserati walk. You feel me? Big M's in a building, Maserati walk. You know what I mean, yeah. Boom, cool. That happens, yeah. So. According to the documents, the surveillance footage shows that Osman started dancing on Douglas. So they're outside. He's at his Maserati, white Maserati, right? Licking his lips, right? All that shit. And then she's like twerking on him, right? Really there, papa tapa booby bat, papa pa booty that, pap you papa booty that, pap 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 right? She's making it clap for him. Outside of fucking Maserati. 
while her friend plays what? Candy Crush on her phone, <laughs> right? <laughs> So yeah, cool. Yeah, she's making she's making it clap for the nigga outside of a fucking club, right? While her friend was in front in front of the vehicle, took so there's another guy involved. Double team, double team thing, right? Cool. The video was then reportedly shows all four people getting inside the Maserati. So they all got inside the Maserati. They all got inside the Maserati. Cool. The unidentified man going to the driver's seat because it's his car. The friend got into the right passenger front seat and Osman and Douglas entered the back. Cool. A few minutes later, Douglas was reportedly seen getting out of the back side. So, what's this? How many minutes later? A few minutes later. Then Osman and her friend also get out. So, they get in for a little bit, maybe to charge their phones, maybe to have a little bit of tongue wrestling, whatever they do. Then they quickly jump out again. According to charging documents, Osman and Douglas were in an argument. So they go, so somehow it went from, that's how you know they're all drunk and doing nonsense. They went from fucking, you know, kissing and touching each other outside. She's twerking on him, having some fun, whatever. They get inside a car. A few minutes later, they step out and they're arguing. It's typical night out shit, right? It happens all the time. Um, blah, blah, blah. Osman were in an argument and Douglas reportedly swung his right hand while holding what appeared to be a plastic water bottle and struck Osman in the face. According to the charging documents, that guy and that girl who said she got hit with a brick go into an argument. The guy has a bottle of water in his hand and he smashes that on the side of her face. Detective says Osman then sat in the passenger seat of the vehicle while Douglas stepped away. She gets hit in the face. They, oh my God, what are you doing, you fucking idiot? They get split apart. She gets told to sit down in the car. The guy gets told to fuck off, I'm assuming, right? When Osman gets out of the vehicle, Detective says the undefined interim man was driving, was driving, took driving took off. So she gets out of the car, he took off. The foolish captain of the incident did not support the statement. So there's video footage of her getting hit in the face with a water bottle after having an argument with a guy outside of a club. Not a brick. Now the question remains: was the water bottle frozen? Your big up Proven 187. Wagwan Proven. Wagwan, my guy Proven. Bang your chest. Was the bottle frozen water? Was the guy fucking four and he had superhuman strength and he was able to turn that bottle of water into a fucking brick with, with his force and shit? How did she get that fucking well? That's what I want to know because the video footage shows she didn't get hit with a brick. So she definitely lied about the brick thing. So how did she get that fucking thing on her head? How? That's why I'm confused. How did she get that? How did that happen then? She didn't get hit with a brick. So what did the guy do? Did he hit her with the water bottle and then with his fist at the same time? And it just maybe made her face go big. Doesn't make any sense. I don't know what's happening there. It continues. Um, when Osman went live on Instagram after the incident, she went viral on social media on the 4th of September of the death of alleged um, assault. A GoFundMe account was created. And da, 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 and listed Osman as a beneficiary. The account raised forty two thousand dollars, according to the charge documents. It stated that she was attacked by a brick, and that she was walking down the street because she was declined to give the guy a phone number. The page reads: Women get hospitalized after allegedly being hit in the face of a brick by a man. She refused to give her number. The alleged incident happened in Houston. She says that she was surrounded by men who did absolutely nothing. She says the guy that got into the car left the scene after assaulting her, afraid that he would never be caught. The viral video link on the GoFundMe still directs her Instagram account. The video received more than 1 million likes. A link to Rhoda's external injuries, credit credits, redirects to TikTok and currently shows the video is unavailable. The GoFundMe account is reportedly frozen after several donors reported it as fraudulent. Um, during the investigation, detectives said they received a call from Daphne Sutton, a mental health advocate and blogger on TikTok who believed that Osman was conducting a scam. So a TikToker <laughs> called the police and said, nah, 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 Because of a similar situation happened in Minneapolis. So she's been known to do this in 2020. She reportedly provided the detectives with another GoFundMe account. I didn't know this part. Wagwan. Big up, Has. Yes, Big yes. up the chat. Have we done the bopper chat yet? Not Just yet. tuned in. Not yet, brother. Not yet, not yet, not yet, not yet. I'll move on because I've been an hour in this stuff and I've been rambling. But not yet, not yet, not yet. We'll move on there. Big up Wingus McDingus. Appreciate you, brother. So, 
She reportedly provided a text of another GoFundMe account that was created by Osman in 2020 with the same narrative of a black man hitting her. Sutton made TikToks about the incident and said some of Osman's friends and her ex-roommate reached out to her to provide a statement. Yo, big up this TikToker. Big up Daphne Sutton. Big up fucking Daphne Sutton. Oh my God. She did the exact same thing in Minneapolis. Detectives reached out to Minneapolis Police Department and asked about the GoFundMe titled Help Black Muslim Mother. Oh, come on. Look at all the victimhood. Black Muslim Mother. Come on, man. You got the black thing. Mother, I'm assuming single. Muslim religion. Come on. What next? Queer. I'm surprised she didn't put that. Help lesbian black Muslim mother. Like, come on, man. I can't believe she fucking duped me. Description stated, a young brook. Look, see, look at that. Look at that. I just said it. A young black Muslim single mother was viciously assaulted by private security in Minneapolis. Viciously. <laughs> Sustaining multiple facial contusions. A black eye injuries to her leg. She needs estimated 5K to pay medical bills, legal fees, and a new phone. You, so you also want a phone? What else do you want? A fucking steak dinner? Anything else? Anything else? Full wax? New nails? Hair done? Fucking hell. And a new phone, you know? Jesus Christ. Um, and I bet if you got an Android, you'll say no. Not an, a new phone, but it, has to, it can't be an Android. It has to be an iPhone. And only like iPhone 10 and up. The Minneapolis Police Department told Houston police that it was not received any reports of Osman being assaulted in 2020. The police department stated that the last contact officers had with Osman was in 2012 for public lewdness and disorderly conduct. The ex-roommate of Osman, who also reached out, told detectives that she and Osman were no longer friends after discovering Osman was scamming people and she wasn't no part of it. So Osman's own friends, this woman's own friends, stopped being friends of her because she was scamming so much. She was scamming so much, her own friends broke up with her. God damn. At the time of writing, Osman has not been arrested. A GoFundMe spokesperson said, we have zero tolerance for misuse of platform, corporations, uh, corporate and, and, co and corporates with law enforcement, investigation, blah, blah, blah. it's not uh, unusual for GoFundMe to pursue legal report. Blah, blah, blah. Cool. So, in theory, in conclusion, this woman lied. She definitely got hit with something. The CCTV show, footage shows it. But how she framed the story that she was walking down the street, minding her business, being a hot young black girl, black girl magic, living her life, not, not hurting anybody, just living her truth, shining her light, whatever it may be. And then some fucking beast of a man decided to ask her for a number. She said no, and he bricked her. That story was false. It didn't happen. The CCTV footage shows that the guy that bricked her or the guy that hit her she, she knew him. They were having some sort of flirtatious back and forth. It didn't end well because it went to an argument and then he ended up hitting her with a water bottle. But a water bottle isn't a brick. But of course, if you want to have a GoFundMe and raise some money, it doesn't bang properly if you say somebody hit me with a water bottle. Does it really? Right? It hits better when you say, I was minding my business being a hot girl and living my hot girl summer and some guy who I said no to hit me with a brick. That has a bit more of a punch to it especially if you team up with the pictures. Now, I just want to know, what's hap what, the, what is the deal with this guy? Did he lie then? Was he not there? Because he said he saw her getting bricked. Was this guy lying and he wasn't there? And I also want to know, how did she get that welt from a water bottle? Like, how does somebody hit you hard enough with a water bottle that you can have your whole side of your face swell up like that? Is that possible? Can somebody tell me? Because it doesn't make any sense to me. Because if you're, because I'm imagining if she was in a club, most likely club water bottles are like the small ones, right? You're not going to get like a massive bottle. I don't know, unless you had an actual like glass bottle or something. But most likely when you go to a club, they give you plastic water bottles, the regular ones. Can you actually throw a water bottle like that at somebody hard enough and make them have a welt on the side of their face? That's what I'm a bit dubious on. But in conclusion, she lied and it's really unfortunate because the actual real victims out there, women who actually do get assaulted, women who actually have been, you know, beat fucking black and blue 
by fucking, you know, monsters of men who don't take rejection well, they are now going to have their stories, you know, put into disrepute. People are now going to be, you know, pouring over the details, combing through everything, asking them loads of questions and kind of making them really their trauma because this lady decided to lie. So vic actual victims that need people's support, that need people's like undying support, right, unwavering support, are now the ones that are going to be, you know, questioned. They're now going to be doubted because this one lady decided to, you know, make this whole scam up. It's absolutely disgraceful. It really is fucking disgraceful. It super is disgraceful, especially because it turned into a bit of a civil war thing. It turned into a bit of like men against women on social media because of this lady. She turned it into like, a, it was like a proper hot bun topic for, you know, the couple of months that it fucking happened. With some guys saying that, yeah, there are, there are some things that women could do that could justify bricking. And women basically saying, no, you can't do anything that would justify hitting me. And this is what happens all the time. And men are evil. It became a really toxic, um, you know, place to be on social media because of this one woman's account that was now being told to be a lie. Fucking crazy, isn't it? Absolutely crazy. But to be fair, looking at his picture, she's a bit of a psycho, isn't it? <laughs> I'm just clocking the picture. She's got her fucking head wrap on, skin glowing, eating a fucking, <laughs> eating a watermelon of the sandwich. Huh? <laughs> I'm black, I need your help. I'm black, I need <laughs> Oh, yo, she's a psycho, man. She's a fucking psycho. She's a fucking psycho, man. I swear. <laughs> Black girl magic. Hey. <laughs> She's fucking nuts. Anyway. Anyway, 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 anyway. Ah, <sighs> okay, dear.